Someone give me a bottle opener. <laughs> Wait, no, I might got it. I might got it. You might got it? No, I actually need it. Yeah, I might got it. So, uh, Sundance 2019 was a, it was a great time. So, 22 movies, and I'm going to talk about all of them right now. Imaginary Order is garbage. I think it is the worst movie I've seen in quite a while. Have no idea how the fuck this got into Sundance. I'm what? You're just fucking ugly. Get the fuck out! Get out! Did not work. Corporate Animals was pretty bad. Uh, it's kind of like The Office, the worst episode of The Office meets uh, the worst in the scary movie franchise. Just didn't think it was that funny. I had potential, but just a very forgettable film. Before you know it was, uh, yeah, it was whatever. It was a movie I saw. Uh, pretty boring. Okay idea. I like that. Bad execution. Andreas liked it. Man. Imagine, cute. imagine, like, your parents forcing you to go to a family gathering where, like, you know absolutely, like, 90% of the people there, you have no idea who they are. And then you try to talk to somebody, and then it just it doesn't go anywhere. That's before you know it. I could not have said it better myself. So I literally just sat down and did this entire thing, but I'm going to have to do it again because everything just got deleted. But these are the top five movies of Sundance 2019. In my opinion, from what I've seen, I saw a total of 24 movies, which is a pretty good amount for just a couple days. Uh, in terms of everything else that I saw, these were the bad ones. These were the ones that weren't as bad. These were good and these were very good but now i want to talk about the five that i thought were great these are the five that i think have a high chance of staying on my top 10 movies of 2019 honestly because they're all great they've been switching around like crazy any one of these could end up being my number one at any point in time but this is just what i'm going to go with for now at number five i have clemency which just won the grand jury prize if you don't remember me you're on the dying girl uh won it two years ago uh last year was miseducation at cameron post and i think those were both pretty good uh, I think this one is definitely better than both of them. I thought, in terms of all the unsettle unsettling things I saw at Sundance, this was the one I felt the most uncomfortable with just throughout the entire runtime. Uh, the subject matter, if you don't know, is about this warden on death row, uh, and she basically is struggling with a moral dilemma of what she has to go through with some of these inmates, and it also focuses, at the same time, on the next inmate that's up on the chopping block, essentially, the next one that's just forced to die. I thought emotionally it was probably the strongest movie. In terms of acting, it was at least top two, I want to say. I think this definitely has a strong chance of making a really strong Oscar run if they decide to campaign for it well. I don't think it's gotten picked up yet at this time, so I don't know what the fuck is going to happen with this movie. But either way, it it's better already than every Best Picture nominee from this year. I felt uncomfortable the entire time watching it, and I can't wait for people to check this out because it's great. <laughs> At number four, I have Greener Grass. Greener Grass I actually saw twice at Sundance. I didn't think I was going to see a single movie two times while I was here, but Greener Grass was one I had to experience twice to see if it was actually one of the best movies of all time. On the second viewing, you lose a little bit of the shock value you get from the very first viewing, but it's still such a solid comedy. Uh, if you don't know what this is, it's based off a short, which I had not seen prior to seeing this movie. Uh, it has two female directors, one of them I met in person, and that's a different story for a different time. But imagine... David Lynch meets kind of a more accessible house in the form of a comedy, and that is what Greener Grass is. This is going to be a movie where some people think it's really fucking stupid, but then there's going to be other people that think it's one of the best things of all time. Uh, I lean closer to the one of the best of all time, even though I don't think it's there after two viewings. But that first viewing of Greener Grass was easily my favorite experience of Sundance. It was great. Uh, I was dying laughing at everything. And I just think it's really worth recommending. I don't know when it's going to come towards people, but Greener Grass, it's great. Keep it on your radar. And I definitely want to see the third time in theaters when I get the chance. At number three, I have Big Time Adolescence. I laughed more in Greener Grass on my first viewing than I did on my first viewing of Big Time Adolescence. But the reason I'm putting this at three is because I feel like it has already more uh, rewatch value. I think I'm going to end up watching it more than Greener Grass in the future, just because it's my sort of coming of age story. And... That's why it's at number three. I think this is a hilarious movie. I think it's a movie where even when it gets emotional, it works. Even when they try and pat down the emotion with some comedy, that also works. Uh, Pete Davidson is fantastic. He basically plays himself, but he's still great as himself. Uh, the main kid was great. Machine Gun Kelly's in there for like five minutes. He was amazing. I want to see more from him. 
And overall, it's just one of my f- favorite movies of Sundance. It doesn't do anything new with the coming-of-age comedy formula, but uh, it's just my type of movie. And if you're into coming-of-age comedies, then you're going to absolutely love this. I can't wait to see it again. My number two and number one have been pretty much uh, interchangeable this entire trip. Uh, I still don't really know which one I like more because I love them both for very different reasons. They're two very different movies. But uh, at number two, I'm going to put The Nightingale. The Nightingale. Nightingales from Jennifer Kent, who brought The Babadook from 2014. Uh, This is not a horror movie. I went in thinking it was going to be a horror movie. It's not. Uh, It's the story of The Revenant uh, mixed with the style of The Witch, mixed with a little bit of Green Book in there, and I thought it all worked perfectly. It comments on a lot, and it all just feels natural. It doesn't feel forced. It doesn't feel preachy. When it is violent, it is fucking violent. I felt the most in clemency i felt uncomfortable the entire time because of the subject matter the nightingale i felt uncomfortable because of what i was actually being shown and all the imagery works without feeling uh exploitive is that the fucking word exploitative exploited 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 it's it's fucking brutal exploitative exploitative it's very exploitative yeah, that's, uh, that's a word. i felt very uncomfortable in a lot of scenes when me and ryan went uh, there was a man that had a seizure halfway through, so if that doesn't hype you up, I don't know what will. Uh, I don't know how wide of a release the Nightingale's gonna get, but it's amazing. Uh, I really like the Babadook. This Babadook has nothing on this. It's not even close. The acting is amazing. The production design is fantastic. Uh, the cinematography looks really great. Uh, I just felt a lot of things with the Nightingale. A lot of people have complained it's kind of long, and I get where they're coming from. It does feel long, and it's a very brutal, long movie. But uh, I thought it was great, and I can't wait to actually see it again, even though I'm going to feel very uncomfortable doing it. Uh, It's great, and it's definitely one of the best I've seen at Sundance. My number one is a movie I had no intention of seeing going into Sundance. I didn't hear any buzz. Uh, There was no real big cast or directors that I was familiar with, uh, besides the main girl that was in uh, Moonrise Kingdom. But To the Stars is a great coming-of-age movie. I'm a huge coming-of-age fan, like I just said, uh, and I thought this one delivered perfectly. I thought uh, it's a mix of part of Lady Bird mixed with part of 8th grade, mixed with the look and style of Nebraska, and it just all works. I thought when it was funny, it was hilarious. When it was serious, it was emotional. I cried twice in this movie. It's hard for me to cry once in any movie, and it got me twice. I don't think uh, I could list three other movies that have done that before so that means something to me the story has great payoff the characters have an authentic arc that doesn't feel forced in any sort of way uh it is in black and white and they said there is a colored version so i hope if this gets released uh nationwide it sticks with the black and white it's not forced to go into color even though seeing a colored version would be cool as well i think the black and white didn't feel like a gimmick Um, My biggest problem with black and white modern movies is a lot of them feel like a gimmick. This didn't really feel like that at all to me. Uh, Same thing with the setting. I felt like it could have just been Lady Bird in the Midwest, but it didn't feel like that. The Midwest had a purpose to the story. Uh, I just loved everything about this movie. I can't wait to see it again. And even the crew, when they were speaking in the Q&A, just made me love the movie so much more. So right now, To the Stars is my favorite of Sundance, but I've been switching with The Nightingale the entire week, so both of them are pretty close, pretty tied. Uh, very different movies as well. So if you're more into something like The Nightingale or more into something like To The Stars, uh, I think it was something really great to look forward to either way. And that's really it. Uh, I can't wait for Sundance 2020 because Sundance 2019 was easily one of the best experiences of my entire life. Had a great time. Uh, can't wait to come back. And what was the outro you told me to do? Fuck all you subscribers. No, we're not doing that one. <laughs>